winding your way up into the upper catchment of the Waikanae River, up into the hills where the river starts its journey. And once we get up there, we're going to have a look for invertebrates to see if we can find out how healthy the awa is. Enjoy the journey. I'd like to introduce you to Natasha from Te Papa Atawhai Department of Conservation. And Natasha has brought you up into the upper reaches of the, I the Waikanae River. It's a, it's a special place up here, Natasha. Yeah, it's beautiful. So as you can see, we're up um, in, the, in the higher reaches of the catchment. And so there's lots of little streams that feed into the main, main river, which you'll see lower down. Uh, and you can see lots of nice bush on the um, margins of the river, uh, fairly unmodified. When you say catchment, what do you mean? So when we think about the catchment, it's not just the, or when I think about the river and its catchment, it's not just the river itself, not just the main stem of the Waikanae River, if you, if you like. It's all the little streams that feed into it, and then also the land that feeds those streams. So to get uh, a lot of the water for the Waikanae will come from rainfall and so it's all that land that that rain falls over and, and washes down into the streams and waterways. So really important to think about the whole catchment, the land around the Awa when we're looking to restore the river and right here beautiful example of something that's natural and not needing to be restored but on Thursday you'll see quite a different environment and you'll see how you can help that environment. So Natasha, what lives in this hour? Yes, yeah, so we've got lots of things in the hour. Um, lots, so right from the periphyton, that's a kind of um, plants that grow on the surfaces of the rocks. Um, or algae that grow on the surfaces of the rocks and plants lower down and the invertebrates, the bugs that live off that, that feed off that, and then the fish again that feed, off, that feed on them and hang out. And you were telling me before that the invertebrates are quite cryptic, mysterious, they're hard to find. So you have actually found some today, how did you go about it? Yep. So we put in what's called a server sampler, it's just a, a net and it has a um, defined area so we can scrub the rocks in front of the net and then the water um, flow of the water washes them into our net and then we can um, see what we've found in there. And we've got one great example down here, that's a stonefly? Yes, yeah, a nice uh, big green stonefly and quite a few mayflies. So these are all species that like to live in um, quite pristine natural areas where there's lots of good oxygen, lots of clean water, swift flowing, so exactly the sort of habitat we see here. And they have quite an important role to play within this river ecosystem. They do. So aside from being um, important in themselves or special in themselves and feeding off the algae on the rocks, uh, they're also food for our fish uh, that live in the rivers. Um, and yeah, so we've got lots of bigger fish, lots of fish species in the Waikanae, 17 species of native freshwater fish that live in the river itself. Wow. Um, and so up around here we'd expect to see things like um, torrent fish, like tuna, our eels, um, some little fish called bullies, uh, and kokapu and koaro, which are adults of the species that you might know as whitebait that come in and see. And next you're actually going to see what fish you can find lower down in the catchment. But do check out these invertebrates, they're pretty cool. Thanks Natasha. That's right, thanks Sean.